Hey, what's going on, fellas? This is a quick little video for Muhammad. We're working on a power supply for his end. And I wanted to show you guys this uh, little voltmeter I have here. It's not just a voltmeter. It also shows you the amperage and the wattage. It's got the, uh, the watt hour and the amp hour as well. And I've got a small electrolyzer here set up just for a current load and um, one of your requests was that you wanted a knob that increased voltage and a knob that increased amperage well there's a problem with the amperage side of that and we'll get to that here in a second but first let's uh, fire this thing up here now I'm gonna increase the voltage a little bit here you can see the voltage is immediately starting to climb on the meter and the amperage is going up as well. We're at about 10 watts. And there is electricity passing through the system. <clears throat> now, this transformer is rated for 150 amps based on the specifications of these bridge rectifiers. That's a bridge rectifier array, basically. And it's set up like that just to kind of keep, keep it as cool as possible. But I tested out the Triac versus the Variac. Now, the Triac doesn't give you quite as much voltage control, and it's a much choppier current than just the regular AC. We don't have any smoothing caps or anything on this, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it up all the way. And see, we're pushing 15 amps into the primary of that transformer which isn't all that good we're only cranking 11 amps into the cell and my max voltage is 15 but that has to do with the resistance of the electrolyte the only way we can increase or decrease the amperage would be to change the resistance of this cell um, we could add a resistor a rheostat maybe that dissipates a lot of heat i could try that out but i wanted to talk to you about this because let me show you what i'm talking about here now hey muhammad the reason why i say i'm not sure you want the amperage switch i don't think you want it is because they're very inefficient they work on the principle of resistance which means we're going to be heating up nicarone wire resistors or a nicarone wire rheostat to illustrate this I'm going to show you, um, we're currently at 10 volts here. Maybe we ought to bring that down. Let's start at 7 volts here, just so I don't catch everything on fire right away. We're at 7 volts. Now I'm going to connect this lead directly up to the power source, and we're going to look at the amperage we get. Okay, we are connected. There's a lot of gas. We are at 5.2 amps. Let me bring that back up to 7 volts though. Okay. So at 7 volts, we are at 6.5 amps. Now, the only way we can bring the amperage down and keep the volts the same is to alter the resistance of the system either by changing the electrolyte solution or or through resistance I'm gonna hook it up way down here on this long piece of nicarone heating element wire I have you can see there it's uh, not willing to register anything it may have too much stuff stuck on it there it goes now we are at one amp seven volts and I am all the way down here. So what we would have to do is check the ohms of that piece of wire. Let's move it down the way a little bit. Let's go right here with it. Now we are at 1.7 amps on the 7 volts. You see the, the cell is cranking out a specific amount. But all the while, this wire is going to get very, very hot. Oh, yeah. As you can see, this piece of wire is very hot. 
We're about 130 degrees there. Here's how everything else is heating up. Look at that transformer. This camera is not acting right at all. But nonetheless, you see what I'm talking about, Muhammad. We have a large amount of heat dissipating here. I'm going to move this down. Ooh, that got hot. At 14 volts, I'm at 1 amp. You can see the wire is getting hot, though. Too hot to touch, even. It doesn't always grip it. There it goes. Almost instantly. That's 3 amps going through that little piece of wire there. So you get the point. Okay, just to show you that this thing's guns are up to date, I'm gonna go ahead and burn this shunt wire up. <clears throat> We're gonna crank some serious amps through this thing. Now you said you needed 40 amps, and I told you I have the transformer that can do it. So let's see what we get here. Sorry. Okay, there's 41 amps. That wire isn't quite burning up yet. We're putting 8 amps into the primary, which is not too bad. That's not really too bad. So this transformer is going to be fine at 40 amps. Boy, she's smoking now. Let's just blow it up, see what it can do. Oh, I just blew a fuse. We hit like 130 amps there, and we nuked the wire. I think the fuse and this probably failed on us. Bow. So, 130 amps. We probably shot about 12 amps into that primary. I didn't get a glimpse of it. Maybe it showed up over here on the camera. But, uh, yeah, we just nuked that wire. I just wanted to show you the potential of the system that it does, in fact, have the ability to crank out the 40 amps you're requesting. It's just going to be a process of dialing in your electrolyte solution. So basically, Muhammad, what it comes down to is we got to talk about what we want to do for a high power rheostat. They're not cheap, so we got to decide if we want to add one to this power supply. Just having the voltage control is good enough. You could simply adjust the amperage by adjusting your electrolyte solution. But if you don't want to go through the hassle, and you still want that rheostat knob that can adjust the amperage, let me know. They look like they're about 200 bucks and we would have to add a cooling fan. Some of them are more expensive than that. So I'm looking into that. I have to test that wire that I showed you and determine the resistance in that wire so that we know what ohm rating um, rheostat we need to purchase.